If we took a healthy individual who had a healthy fat mass, because that's so important to all of this, their insulin levels as a child would be in, in a healthy range, kind of maybe around 10. And then in that range, you just 10 micro units. In the span you just mentioned, um, in the kind of mid-teens, like right when growth is, is peaked and, and peaking and then about to come down, I would expect insulin levels should normally be in the mid to high teens. And then after that, they have grown. They're done making fat cells for the most mm -hmm. part. Um, and then they've reached adulthood. Insulin levels will come down and then should settle back down to under 10. So uh -huh. it can almost double during puberty and then it should come back down. There was a fascinating study in young women with polycystic ovary syndrome who did not meet any obvious clinical metric of insulin resistance. But then the scientists, in other words, they were generally normal body weight. They didn't have uh, you know, dramatically elevated fasting insulin or the, their HOMA score was normal. But when they measured the insulin and the free fatty acids and computed them together, they were significantly higher. That overall formula was significantly higher than in their uh, equally body weight control group you know so same body type same body mass and yet no pcos in those women their adipose ir score was significantly lower and i think that's further evidence that this is a problem that starts in the fat cells even if it hasn't manifested throughout the rest of the body once the fat cells become insulin resistant it's the first domino to fall and then it's just a matter of time before it starts yeah. tipping over into other tissues um, triglycerides are one of the fastest responders to carbohydrate restriction. Um, so triglycerides will just mm. plummet dramatically. I actually consider triglycerides to be perhaps the single best lipid marker of heart disease. As much as we have focused on LDL for now decades, I, I'm very, um, I consider that to be very unfortunate because LDL is a terrible predictor of heart attack. Yeah. Um, and, and heart disease risk. And I think triglycerides is a better marker. Now, the question is, well, why not look at triglycerides? This is a bit of a cynical take, Dom, and you'll pardon me for expressing it. Mm -hmm. I think one of the reasons we don't measure triglycerides more often is because we don't have a drug that can specifically target triglycerides like we yeah. do with, say, LDL. But, but even then, reflective of insulin's almost dictatorial ability to control fuel metabolism, um, nutrient metabolism within the whole body, Insulin controls not only the measure of free fatty acids through lipolysis, but insulin also controls lipogenesis, the formation of new fat. And when we look at how insulin stimulates lipogenesis in the liver, promoting the synthesis of triglycerides, and then packaging those triglycerides into the triglyceride-rich lipoproteins of VLDL and LDL, mm -hmm. you know, the main transporters of triglycerides through the plasma, it's no surprise that insulin will dramatically increase triglycerides. Uh, and, and that, I believe, is maybe the most relevant variable with regards to heart disease risk, or at least the best predictor. When insulin starts to come down through fasting and lifestyle interventions, triglycerides will come down very rapidly as well.